Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So still working on the garden wall. We're gonna be working on that for a while. So it takes up quite a large portion of this uh, pattern. It's starting to go back towards my normal way of uh, sloping my work as the colors are now going that way. So I had it coming the other way and now I'm kind of converting back to my normal direction. But yeah, I kind of follow the, uh, the outline of the motifs on uh, the pattern when it sort of makes sense to do so. Yeah, it is a very gloomy one today. Lots of smoke in the air and cloud. Yeah. I still went for my walk this morning. Actually, like when it's a little chilly, then I don't get all sweaty. So <laughs> yeah, I had to go to the drugstore to buy some stuff. So yeah, just walked there and did my shopping and walked home. It's like over four kilometers. So yeah, 5,000 steps approximately, so decent workout. Yeah, I was saying that our warm weather's over, but actually they're forecasting some nice weather next week, so we'll see. Yeah, it's funny, sort of the one year I wouldn't mind if there was a bit of earlier snow since that would help to put a stop to all these wildfires, but nope. <laughs> Always the way, right? Yeah. So, I didn't quite start out at zero for this session, but I didn't have a lot done already. 35 there, so, yeah. Yeah, so we finally went through and digitized a bunch of uh, our old um, videos. When our son was born, we bought a camcorder and it ran on miniature DVD discs or whatever. Because that was like, you know, the, the highest tech at the time, <laughs> 2007. This was before smartphones were, you know, really out and affordable for the, you know, everyday person kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. Finally went through and digitized those. So it was fun going back and looking through some old memories. And yeah, when Kittle was you know, didn't even come up to my knee. <laughs> he was so little, and now he's taller than me. Mm. Yeah, and I have to go finally uh, deal with that with my, um, my still pictures, all my negatives. Although um, my cousin said she has a really nice high-tech scanner because she's into photography, and she would like to make it a career one day, but uh, yeah. So she said she'd be willing to do that for me rather than my buying a cheap one. So, yeah, that'll be nice. I'll have to ship all my negatives out to her. Yeah, because I was looking at just buying a basic $150 one. But yeah, if she's got a $2,000 one, I bet the quality's way better than mine. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting, too, because we had a digital camera when our son was little, but uh, going back to those pictures now, they're they're definitely not as high quality as the digital ones you take now because um, I finally set up the photo frame and it zooms in on the picture, so it looks fine when it's zoomed out, but when it zooms in, yeah, you can see things getting kind of pixelated and definitely not as sharp high quality as the stuff you take now. <clears throat> Yeah, it's kind of wild. I remember one time I was trying to take a picture of something with my digital camera, some writing I was working on, but I didn't want the actual words to be visible yet because I wasn't done editing. And uh, so I had the paper like on the floor and I kind of stood up on my couch and, you know, held the phone way up high to take the picture thinking that would make it fuzzy enough. But no, if you zoomed in, you could still see it. So I ended up having to download an app to make it a little blurry because I was trying to show that it was all covered in red pen the entire page yeah but I didn't want anyone to actually be able to read the words yet because it wasn't ready yet so yeah but yeah I'm amazed now like you take a picture with your smartphone you can zoom 
like of a cross stitch and you can zoom in until you can see like all the individual stitches and it's still nice and sharp clear it's yeah incredible because cell phone cameras used to be pretty lousy but yeah now they're pretty darn good most people don't own a separate camera anymore <laughs> yeah i was a little late to the uh the smartphone bandwagon so um i remember we were at a an event and i was taking pictures and i said i'm probably the only person here whose camera is just a camera you know it's not also a phone <laughs> uh, i think uh my kiddo was five yeah we were at a um this christmas party where the kids were making uh gingerbread houses but technically it wasn't gingerbread it was with um graham crackers but yeah so i wanted to take a picture of his creation and uh I had an actual digital camera. Yeah, and I didn't have a cell phone at the time. How did we live like that, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Telling my kid how, you know, you used to call home and use the collect call thing and just hopefully you hoped that you got an operator who wasn't a person because if it was a machine, then you could very quickly yell a message, you know. So it's like your parents would hear on the other end, you know, you have a collect call from mom, pick me up at the mall. And then, you know, do you wish to accept the charges? And then they'd say no, or they'd quickly say, coming to get you and then hang up. And so it didn't cost anything, but uh, yeah, that way you could, like my husband said, it, you know, one time I'm at the park out of gas because <laughs> his car ran out and yeah, he had a, his first car had a faulty fuel gauge. So yeah, it would show that it had plenty of fuel left and it turned out you didn't he's like yeah i should have learned to start carrying you know some extra in a jerry can at the time but i didn't think of it until i got myself stranded a few times <laughs> that'll learn ya. <laughs> okay there we go yeah so with the shading here on this on this uh, part of the pattern, it's like little stripes almost. So, how do you keep things interesting? Having to change colors. So yeah, I used to sort of stitch all sorts in one color and then fill it in, but uh, I found I made more counting errors that way. And uh, it's harder to get your needle up between the stitches that are already done. It's not quite as neat, so that's why I changed to this. But I mean, that's not to say my way is necessarily any better. It's just my way. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have several threads of this running around. I can see that now. Yeah, so the pattern kind of goes like down like this and then there's a sort of a straight part across of the stone pillar but that sort of seems like a good stopping place to fill in down to there and then once I've sort of filled in a whole bunch have sort of a line here then I'll start filling in lower down so yeah just kind of make breaks where it's seems a natural place to Yeah, so my hands are finally healed up from all that juicing. They always get a little yeah, reaction from all the acid and the apples. I, like I said, I do wear gloves, but you can't keep all of it off your hands entirely. And uh, yeah, especially on my ring finger, I find that knuckle gets really dry. But uh, yeah, it's finally healed itself up, so glad to be done with that. So these bits here kind of go this way and I may follow that a bit. I do that sometimes. So for the moment I won't. Like I said that does cause a little bit of closing in but that's okay. Okay so I have two strands of this pink. Let's see how long this one is. Not very. Okay. 
that one is. That was a longer one, yeah, that I just used. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go downwards a little bit. As I said, this is sort of where I'm cutting it off there. So fill this in. Yeah, so I was going through the old videos and there was one where my son had, I, we bought him a little keyboard to play with because he was fascinated by mom's piano. So, uh, and of course it came with the little, um, you know, demos in it. And uh, he only liked the first one, which was like this March. And it had like 20 demos, but he would never let it play anything else. So I had a video of him just, yeah, every time it switched to the next song, he'd go over, push the button to start it again, then stand there and dance to it. <laughs> he was like, not even two, yeah. Oh, I had someone I once posted saying, you know, oh, I'm losing my mind with my kiddos musical toys and somebody said well you know put a sticker over the speaker it's not so loud i said no it's not the volume it's the repetitiveness you know so he had this little like toy guitar and it would play um oh gee what was it the first yeah i'm gonna do something out of order here it would play like the first 30 seconds of love shack and then it would repeat when you push the button again so yeah having to hear that constantly all day long was very wearing on the nerves Yeah, repetitive sounds just, they drive me up the wall. <laughs> but of course, you know, when kids are that age, they love watching the same video over and over and uh, the same book over and over, right? Yeah. Okay. Just gonna kind of work right along this edge here. So I did close in a little bit there, but not for long. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not that finicky about never closing stuff in. I try to avoid it, but if it happens, it happens. Yeah, so the other half is home today. <laughs> He's got a lot of time to burn after having gone up to the uh, Northwest Territories. So here he comes, that was the chime of the door. <laughs> okay. I did tell him I'm filming, so. <laughs> He's not going to yell for me or anything. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's a security system. We got one on the garage door, so. I said, you can never really sneak in on me because I'll know when you're coming. Because <laughs> it chimes when you open the door. Hmm. Yeah, although he's got to go up to Northwest Territories again, like a couple weeks, but that's the last planned trip for this year. So fingers crossed that uh, nothing breaks. Cause yeah, I mean, he's the, he has quite a large area of the country to, uh, to keep the machines running for his company. So yeah does involve a fair amount of travel but uh, he really likes his work so I mean yeah that's something that's invaluable that's for sure yeah he likes his work loves the people he works with they're a great group of people so yeah I think he's finally found the place where he is happy to work till he retires there. Yeah, it could be hard to find that right fit.
Okay, so yeah, I could have stitched this sort of, these bits sloping the other way, but there isn't very much of them. So, whoops. So instead, I'm going to kind of keep it to this diagonal for now, even if that means switching colors a little more often. Yeah, so I was saying about piano, because yeah, I play a bit. I downloaded a new piece, but I think maybe I picked something that was a little too hard. <laughs> so I don't know. I might pick away at it for a while, but it's like a cover of a piece I like, but it's more complicated than the original one. Yeah, it was a guy on YouTube was playing it, and I thought, wow, that's beautiful. And then it was like, sheet music is available here. And I thought, okay, well, I'll give that a try. And yeah. I think I can, but it's going to take a lot of work to be able to to play that. Especially because he's got a lot of stuff that's not written in the main staff of it. It's like way up past the treble clef and way down below the bass clef staff, which means I end up having to count lines to figure out what note it is because I can't tell just by looking at it if it's not in the main, you know, five five line staff, yeah. At any rate, I have his uh, his version of it on YouTube, so I listen to it for inspiration, and maybe one day I'll learn to play it, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I actually hadn't played for quite a while, kind of got back into the habit of it, but I'm just an intermediate player, yeah. Yeah, my mom wanted me to be first a concert pianist, but I'm not that good. <laughs> and then uh, she wanted me to be piano teacher, but I'm like, I don't think I'm the world's greatest teacher, so, <laughs> yeah. Of course, then I start a YouTube channel with tutorials, so who knows? Maybe I was wrong about that. <laughs> um, I guess maybe it depends what you're teaching. Oh, that one had a needle on it, and I just unthreaded it and threw the needle at my face. <laughs> That's not good. <clears throat> but yeah, maybe it depends what you're teaching. And how you're teaching too, I suppose. Yeah, my husband does some teaching, like I've said before. he He's in the amateur ham radio club, so he does some of that. <clears throat> yeah, our son took the course mostly audited it but so he could learn some of the stuff so yeah because anyone can own <clears throat> a ham radio but you have to have a license to to use it so and then the idea is also if there's a disaster and communications are down you're required to be sort of part of the communications network yeah it's one of those things you hope will never happen, of course. in the loop there. Didn't unthread my needle though, so I suppose that's something. So yeah, I've got my drapes open all the way to try and get as much natural light as possible, but I'm afraid that there is not very much. It is it's a gloomy one. Oh, did I miss that? Oh, I missed crossing that one previously. Uh -huh. Yeah, I realized that it has only one leg going the opposite direction, so. But luckily, it's actually the same color, so no problem. Very easy to fix. Yeah, so I got my crafting lamp on to get enough light in here. 
Yeah. Soon we'll get into some leaves and flowers, but I think it might be a, a few more sessions before that kicks in, before we reach that part. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of this pink scattered around, so... We're gonna have more than one thread for that, that's for sure. mode I was in. I'm just trying to park it. But when it's in move mode, it will just select or deselect the color. feel there wasn't enough resistance. I didn't catch enough threads. There we go. So pull the needle back and try again. Make sure it will actually be secure. Yeah, so finally, I went out and bought the Halloween candy before it all is hard to find, but I make sure I don't open any of the boxes or it'll all be gone <laughs> by Halloween. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I started in 2020 just leaving the bowl out for people to take some. And uh, yeah, after that, I just like, now I do that every year. Then I don't have to keep opening the door. It's a pain. <laughs> People take more than one. Well, all right. What you gonna do, right? Most people are pretty good, though, I find around here. There's usually still some candy left by the end of the night. Actually, it was weird. We lived in a tiny little, little uh, town that was like population 300 people, but I don't know if people came from like neighboring little towns to go because we had tons of kids, I remember. That first year we were living there, I wasn't expecting to get, you know, more than maybe a dozen. And we must have got like a couple hundred kids. It was wild. 
We almost ran out of candy. I always buy extra so that we, you know, have leftovers and an excuse to eat them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had almost none. And then we moved to a bigger city that, you know, actually has malls and gas stations and things. Because <laughs> yeah, that tiny little town I had was one tiny little general store where all the mail was delivered. And, you know, yeah, you, you could buy bananas there, but they cost, you know, six times what they would in the city kind of thing. Um, yeah, but then we moved to a bigger city and we don't get very many. I think partly because our street kind of, we live on a little section that doesn't really connect as well to other streets. It's kind of almost hidden. And I think people often just, as they're blanketing the neighborhood, they miss our little section of road. So, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. I saw some places they wanted to make it that, like, you legally could only trick-or-treat if you were under a certain age. I just thought, ah, oh, I don't care. If you show up at my house with a costume, you can have candy, you know? Plus, I said, teenagers often have the most amazing imaginative costumes because they often make them themselves, right? So, yeah. You definitely get candy because that's cool <laughs> to see. Yeah, I think we did trick-or-treating until I was like 16. But I also looked really young for my age, so I could kind of get away with it. <laughs> I didn't look 16, I looked like 12. So, yeah. Ugh. Something I definitely wasn't very appreciative of when I was a kid. Because, yeah, you get it all the time going to high school. And the elementary school is right there. And a lot of times people aren't even trying to be snarky. They honestly thought I was in the wrong place. And it's like, yeah, I'm 15, thanks. But... <laughs> Ugh. Yes, I know I'm super short and I don't look old enough to be here, but I am. Yeah, I think I only finally just started not getting carded for buying alcohol now that I'm in my 40s. But yeah, I had a guy card me and uh, so I, you know, handed over my ID and he kind of looks at it and then his eyebrows kind of go up and I'm like, ah, you thought I was barely legal, huh? It's like, yeah. I'm almost legal twice over because uh, here in this province, legal drinking age is 18. In BC, where I grew up, it's 19. But yeah, it's like, I almost have a kid who's old enough to legally drink. <laughs> so, ooh. Yeah, and I, you know, I didn't have him super duper young either. <laughs> so, it wasn't like I was in high school or anything, so... Well, my mom got carded till she was like 50, so I guess I I got her genetics there. Yeah, one of my friends, she kind of went in. She didn't expect to be carded at all. And she's like, well, look, I have gray hair. And you're like, well, some people go gray, you know, early. Because, yeah, I, ha I know someone who started getting grays when they were 18. So, yeah. Like, yeah, sorry, but it's the law. She's like, no, seriously, because she's a couple years older than me, I think. And so her oldest is old enough to drink, you know? And it's like, come on. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I mean, I get it. They're just doing their job, right? If they got caught selling stuff to someone who wasn't the proper age, they can get in a lot of trouble. My husband worked in a gas station when he was in high school, and he said, yeah, he had people all the time trying to buy cigarettes without ID and uh, getting really mad when he's just like, well, sorry, but it's my, you know, butt on the line. If, if you're not of legal age, I can't just take your word for it. So, yeah. And actually, he had um, undercover come in a few times, he said. So, but yeah, they never caught him because he... He didn't make any exceptions. <laughs> yeah. And he said, some people get really nasty about it. And it's like, well, you know the rules. It ain't my fault, you know. A guy, well, I'm buying it for my dad. He's in the car. And he's like, well, then your dad needs to come in and buy it. Because legally, you can't buy them. You know, you're 14. Like, and it's like, yeah. Sorry he doesn't like it, but that's the way it is. <laughs> okay two of this, but I'm pretty sure one of these is really short, if I'm recalling correctly. Oh, that's actually longer than I thought. What about this top one? 
Oh, no, actually neither of them's really short, huh? Okay, well in that case, I will just probably tie off this one. Yeah, sometimes that just happens. Yeah, this color was kind of scattered around, so that's why I ended up with two threads and now sort of have more threads than stitches, so. Yeah, I remember my dad taking me out for my first beer when I was 19, and I discovered, yeah, beer is not my thing. <laughs> uh. He bought me his favorite, which was like an Irish ale, but I didn't like it, so. He said, if you don't like this, you probably don't like any beer, and he was right. It is, yeah, not my thing. I'm not much of a drinker. Just not my thing. Plus, I mean, it's not cheap either, right? So, <laughs> okay, so again, two threads. Let's see how long this one is. This lower one is okay. This one is not that long, okay. So that lower thread will be enough. Okay, I can see that. So I'm gonna just carry this over to here. Right, I remember I have to start a new thread for this color. Let's see if I've got any short leftover bits. Ah, I do. Excellent. Oh, moved my neck a bit wrong last night, so I'm going to have to lie down on my stretcher board a bit <laughs> today. Yeah, like I said, I may have to go back for some maintenance uh, acupuncture treatments, but yeah, I did, I had that back in February, and I'm amazed at the difference it made. I've been almost pain-free most days, which is an improvement because I haven't been since I was a kid. Yeah, I've had neck problems pretty much my whole life, so. Yeah, my regret is I waited so long to dry it. Ugh. Okay, actually, there's still a bit left over from this one. I'll use these when I have single stitches of this color. Yeah, and it helped with my husband's back pain, too, so. Yeah, the first session or two, I mean, first I was amazed that I went and touched the tight muscle that's usually in my shoulder, and it was, like, slack, which is, like, hasn't been ever. And uh, that was, but I did find my pain actually increased for, for a couple of sessions. But then it, it did improve, and it's so much better. Yeah, I went for five sessions and then uh my practitioner had stuff come up and they had to cancel and they said you could see someone else or you could you know wait until she comes back and I said honestly I'm feeling better so they said well give us a call if it flares up again but so far it hasn't I had a couple of days that it hurt a little bit but not enough that it was really anything that noticeable and then it was fine the next day so yeah 
I'm really, really glad. Yeah, my husband hated having it done because he has a needle phobia, but uh, yeah, it was at the point that he tried everything short of surgery for his back injury and nothing was helping, so he was willing to let someone stick needles in him even though he, he hates needles. <laughs> Our son had it too, but he seems okay now. I had people say, you know, how did you help him get over it? I'm like, honestly, I don't know. Just kind of did, so. Yeah, I mean, I said I don't like needles, but they don't really bother me that much. But yeah, like if I have to get blood drawn, my husband has to leave the room because he doesn't want to see it. And yeah, my... um. My mom's mom was the same way. She said she remembers her brother needed to get blood drawn. And uh, my mom was saying that she felt this like heavy weight on her. And she's like, what is that? Dude? Was her mom fainted on her? <laughs> oh. oh, dear. Yeah, my husband kind of has to warn the... Uh, nurses when he has surgery that if he's out of it he'll try to rip his IV out so they have to watch him because yeah like if he's conscious he can deal with it but yeah if he's sort of in that twilight you know half out of it then yeah he just instinctively tries to to get rid of it so Yeah, it was funny too looking at old stuff videos and our kiddo says oh that's when dad's hair was all black <laughs> like yeah it's not now <laughs> it's half gray mm -hmm. yeah whereas i have i have some grays but they're like six of them <laughs> not a lot yet so I don't mind it. I just, I don't like that gray hair is like a different texture than the rest of your hair. It's like more wiry, so it sticks out funny. Yeah. Because I don't really care that it's, the color is gray. It's just that, yeah, weird texture thing that I don't like. Okay, which way is this twisted? There we go. Oh my goodness. I hate that. I didn't have this slide far enough down. There we go. So the end kind of got stuck. There we go. That's annoying. I said I was hoping to reach 25% done by the end of this month, but we're early on, but I don't think that's going to happen. Not if I'm going to work on Firefly as well. Maybe 23 or 24 would be more. Oh, dear. Shredded that. Yeah, will be more doable. We'll see. But <clears throat> not on a deadline either. Yeah, so my spreadsheet estimates that I'll be done mid-2025, so not, not next year, but the year after. So, yeah, it means we got about 20 months left, 18, 20 months left, so we shall see. Yeah, my original estimate for the whole thing was about 20 months, but 
now that I've incorporated working Firefly into it, that's not going to happen. So, and then Firefly is going to take a while. Yeah, it estimates me to be done sometime in 2030. So we will see. Yeah, that one is for 550,000 stitches. So biggest project I've ever made. Yeah, there's some in um, Heaven and Earth Designs. They have some super-sized ones that are like over a million stitches, which is just like, holy cow. You definitely would have to work on smaller count than 14, that's for sure. I don't think you could get a cloth that big. <laughs> Even 18 would probably be pushing it. You'd probably have to go to like 25 count at the, at the biggest. Yeah, saying about going over photos too and videos. My son's uh, picture from a couple grades ago, I sent it to my cousin and she says, holy cow, he looks like grandpa. And I thought, oh, you know, I didn't even really, really notice, but he totally does. It's funny how those things, you know, kind of skip a generation and stuff. One of uh, One of our cousins totally looked like there's pictures of them at the same age, and the only way I could tell which one was my grandpa was because it was in black and white. Yeah, which is funny because his dad took after the mom, but then his son took after, yeah, the grandfather. So, yeah, it's funny how those things can skip a generation. Yeah, if my kid has kids, I'll be interested to see what of me ends up showing up or not. <laughs> And it's funny how things change, too, because uh, when our son was a newborn, he looked very, very Chinese, and he's only a quarter, you know. And then um, then when he got a little older, he was like his dad's clone. And then now he's starting to look a bit more like my side of the family. So, yeah, it's interesting how things change. My sister doesn't really look like our mom, but her daughter has the same eyes. Yeah.
see the thread is getting very twisty. Drop the needle for a bit there. Yeah, that's better. Need a new strand. So I think maybe 70,000 total completed by the end of this month should probably be a feasible goal. It's almost 64. So yeah, I'm not sure how much percent that would be, but... Maybe I should go by that. Anywhere from 12 to... 15,000 stitches at a month is how much I can put in. Of course, depending on how much confetti there is. And of course, what else is going on in life and how much time I get to actually stitch. Like I said, last month I was busy, so I didn't get as much done. Although, still a decent amount. I was, I was happy with it. Slow progress is still progress, right? <laughs> too short. <laughs> That's because there's a knot in it. There we go. Yeah, when the thread is suddenly an inch shorter, you know that something's wrong. This one part down here I don't think is too terribly long. Yeah, not enough to carry all the way up, so I'm going to start a new one. Okay. Yeah, there's so much of this color in this area that pretty much all the threads I touch will probably get used up before I end up with the problem of having too many threads in one, in one area of the same color. And if I do end up with that, I just do what I did earlier, which is end one of them off and 
save the leftover bits for later. Generally, I try not to highlight too many stitches at once or I'll get lost as to where I am. <laughs> yeah, I used to, when I worked with the paper and highlighters, I would highlight a lot bigger sections and then kind of use a ruler on the pattern to try and keep my place, but that might have been also why I made more mistakes too. And I wasn't parking then. I only started doing parking when I had when I had the Pattern Keeper app to do all that searching and highlighting for me. Yeah, I was at the checkout the other day and saw the new cross-stitch magazine for the little Christmas ornaments. Just the little patterns that are, you know, like three inches or something. But I was like, you know what? The idea of stitching from paper just does not appeal to me. So... Honestly, I have tons of Christmas ornaments already. I probably don't need to be making any more. <laughs> I seem to be twisting my threads more than usual today. Maybe it just seems like it, I don't know. Oh, right, actually. I'm gonna do a stitch with this one. Closing it in.
Deciding, planning ahead a little bit. feeling the needle was, or the thread was not still attached, but I was hoping I was wrong. <laughs> This thread is pretty much done. So yeah, I bump up into the next thread of this color, but by the time I do, it's finished anyway, so it works out well. of that, didn't I? There we go. There we go.
Okay. Make sure I drink enough so I don't get headaches, yeah. I found taking omega-3 oil, it helped with uh, dry mouth and stuff that I had from other medications, but then the problem is now I don't remember to drink water as much. <laughs> I have to actually consciously think about it now <laughs> to make sure I hydrate enough that I don't get a headache. Well, smoke in the air does not help either, that is for sure. Those three. And we'll do these, and then that'll be it for this piece of thread. We're about to pass 250. I didn't start at zero, but I didn't have a ton done. It was only around 30 something when I started, so that's still pretty darn good progress. Plenty long enough. use up this piece as well. Well, maybe I'll get a little bit more out of it. We shall see.
Okay, so I think I'm gonna take a break soon. Yeah, so my big goal is to have this pass done by the end of November, I think. I don't think by the end of this month is likely to happen, but by the end of next month. If not, then by the end of the year for sure. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'll do this bit here that I've just highlighted, and then that will be where I take my break. Yeah, cause even with having not started at zero, that's still, I did over 200 stitches, so quite happy with that. Oh dear. Yeah, so I don't follow a perfect but diagonal, but didn't close anything in there. So as my usual. Oh, look at that. I have 280 stitches done today and I have 20.80% done completed. That's kind of funny. Ooh, I like catching numbers like that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining tonight, today and I hope to see you here again another time. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye.